Suppose I invented a cult which grew to accrue international membership. In order to join the cult, one of the only things you'd have to do is pledge your honor and service to me. After all, I invented the cult, so it's only fair, right? I would, of course, also require you to regularly supply me with about 10% of your time, treasure, and talent to do whatever I saw fit with. Now, other than that, as a cult member, you'd also be required to base your life off of everything I say and ever have said in my videos. As cult members, you'd be expected to revere my words as pretty much flawless, so it would be best for you to just go ahead and do whatever my videos said in whatever way I said to do them. Even if other people found those instructions to be appalling, you would have the excuse that your actions were dictated by a superior power, and you were just following orders. If they want proof that I'm as flawless as you claimed, just tell them you have faith and that they're worthless excuses for humans if they don't have it. And go ahead and hate those people if they still don't like what I said, since they're obviously dicks. Unless you can get them to join, then they're cool. Now, I know many of you wouldn't be interested in joining the cult already based merely on the fact that you disagree with some of the things I say. However, thanks to the unabridged license of personal interpretation all members are entitled to, you can interpret my words to mean pretty much whatever you want. If I say something you disagree with, you can just call it a metaphor for something you do agree with. And if I say something other people write off as a metaphor but you feel passionately about, you can feel free to interpret that as literal. You're both right no matter what, and if one of you confronts the other about getting the interpretation wrong, you can just accuse each other of not being true cult members and move on, feeling that you're not only right, but that a practically flawless entity agrees with you. Even if in the future I post a video that completely contradicts what I said in an earlier video, you're free to just embrace whichever video you agree with and call the contradicting one a symbol or something. Hell, you can even do both of those things and just cite the appropriate video as support for your actions, being careful not to mention the other one if it's inconvenient at the time. Oh, also, members of the cult need to lop off half of the pinky fingers of their children at birth. Just, just one pinky finger, just lop off half of it. It doesn't really have a practical application, but it's a tradition that the cult will be pretty fond of, so it's strongly encouraged that you join in. After all, it'll be done at birth, so when the children grow up, they won't even remember it, and they'll be able to get along just fine in society with the 9.5 fingers we leave intact. Alright, do you have the image of my cult clearly formed in your brain now? It would take a lot to get people to take the cult seriously, but mostly it would just take a few heavy generations of indoctrination, and we'd have to get the general populace to somehow shrug off the horrific things people do so long as it was done in my name. But it could happen. So, continue to imagine that my cult does exist, and it does thrive in modern times. I would support any who argued that humanity would be generally better off if my cult was ended. If people stop joining, stop mutilating their children in, in my name, stop feeling that their own personal bigotries and biases were reinforced by a superior, flawless entity. I feel the same way about modern day religion, but as of late I've heard some odd defenses against the desire to see modern religion go the way of the Tyrannosaurus. They're extinct now. That being said, I can't imagine people making the same excuses for not bothering to want my cult gone that they make for saying it would be pointless to get rid of religion. Can you imagine me telling activists against the deleterious spreading of my cult? Look, I agree with you. Some people are downright evil in the name of my cult, but you're just not being very nuanced about this. After all, if you got rid of my cult, then surely something else would just pop up to replace it, so why bother? And look, my cult isn't the only cause of harm in the world, so why would you want to stop it from causing harm? Don't you get that some amount of harm will continue happening even if you were successful at stopping that which is caused by my cult? Hey, look, we have all kinds of people too. The Smith family down the road have been members for decades, and they're all really good people. My cult serving as a catalyst and justification for countless other people to commit violent acts of bigotry and child mutilation shouldn't allow you to dismiss families like the Smiths. I mean, they even do charitable work sometimes. Can you imagine them doing that if not for their interpretation of my divine influence? I don't think anyone could take me seriously if I try to dismiss the interest in ending my cult with such lame excuses as those. As such, I'm not sold on people who use those very explanations to say it's pointless to hope for modern religion to join its predecessors of ancient religion as mere storybooks we look back on in the study of cultural history. 
I'm open to hearing actual arguments against my opinion, though. If someone can tell things that modern religion does, which are positive, that secular organizations given equal funding couldn't do as well or better, I'd be happy to listen. If someone can thoroughly explain how harm merely having multiple sources causes it suddenly to become pointless to remove any one of those sources, I'd gladly lend my ear to it. The real shortcut would be for anyone to empirically prove that any deity ever worshipped and used to justify the atrocious acts that religion has caused throughout history actually exists. If you have a philosophical, logical, or data-driven set of information that contradicts my stance on the matter, I'd be pleased to hear it. I only ask that you bring me something better than the aforementioned arguments, which would never be taken seriously against another establishment that did the same exact things with the same exact rationale, stripped of the Kevlar label of religion.